What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Live Composing Show. This is your host, Stephen Malin. I hope you are doing fantastic today. Man, oh man, it has been too long since I've done a stream with you guys. Uh, the goal for a couple years now has been to try to keep these things consistent on Thursdays, every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, but last week, we had some nasty colds running through our family, so we had to adjust some things. And then even inside Video Game Music Alliance, there's a lot of change happening over there, um, especially trying to get ready for Black Friday and all the things coming up this month. And then meanwhile, uh, in our family, uh, we are expanding to our sixth kid. So my wife's currently pregnant. Um, so there will be some period of time where I'll be taking a break uh, from work. And so just trying to get all the ducks in a row and, and make all that happen. Uh, but I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, the goal today was with the rebranding of the YouTube channel to the previously named Stephen Malin YouTube channel, I thought it was time for a fresh facelift. And so I went for a simple gray tone uh, right there, which I like. It's like it's like a, a fresh coat of paint. Um, and as you can see right there, it says, you know, live composing show every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard and then music available for licensing now. So the big push with this channel is going to be these weekly live composing shows as normal. And we're going to have uh, music licensing available from my website. So if any of you happen to be project creators, whether it's for film, video games, TV, trailers, podcasts, what have you, um, I now have music available for licensing. I've always had music available for licensing, but it's a lot more streamlined now and a lot more valuable and, and interesting. Um, so I hope that that is uh, a great value add for you. But of course, if those of you who are interested in learning more about the creation of music, the music theory side, the music composition, production technology business, and all of those things, this channel will not be for that. Instead, I'm going to push you towards the Video Game Music Alliance channel, which is now its own YouTube channel as well. We've separated the two. They're no longer one thing. It's two separate things. Um, so go check that out. And that's YouTube. YouTube.com slash. You can now do the at sign in YouTube. So YouTube.com slash at sign VGM Alliance. And you can check that out. Uh, and a few fun announcements for today. If you look in the description below, uh, I'm going to try to be better about using the description for links because I, I usually toss a lot of information at you guys. So hopefully that's just a, a better way to organize information. But you can see it on there that there's uh, three things that you can check out today. First is uh, there's actually two soundtrack releases all on the same day, apparently. Um, the first one is uh, the Final Fantasy Sleep. It's a piano arrangement album that I worked on. And I recorded on a felt piano, and it's it's set to really relaxing uh, pads and um, serene, what do you call it, a, a stream sound effects, sound design. And so it's intentionally very slow and very, um, very relaxing. And so that is perfect sleep music, working music. Um, I personally, whenever I'm doing admin tasks, I, I usually have that type of music on. Um, I'm not big on having vocals screaming at me while I'm trying to like type sales copy or emails or whatever, um, doing, doing my budgeting and stuff. So, uh, I hope that that is a huge blessing for you guys. That's now available on streaming. And then another album just released and that's the Bore Night original soundtrack, uh, which I had the pleasure of working on many of the songs. Um, off the top of my head, I can't even tell you which songs I was involved in, but it was probably about five or so. Um, Originally, that whole uh, you may got you guys were probably with me. Many of you were with me uh, way back when we started that thing. I did a lot of live composing shows uh, directly for uh, the Born Night. Um, many of those songs did not make it to the end. We actually brought on another songwriter composer, Ryan McQuinn, who helped dramatically bring that to the final. Because originally that that uh, pitch was to be a Netflix cartoon show. Um, an animated show, but instead it got transformed into an audio drama podcast. And so we had to completely change the direction of it and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, you can hear the remnants of many of my original ideas that were later transformed by Ryan or some of my original ideas that actually made it. Uh, and I think it's song number five. It's called Stirring Stories or what's the final name? It's three S's. It's like scary, stirring stories, whatever it ended up being. Um, 
that sucker won best song uh, in one of the recent, I think it was the New Jersey, the New York um, Web Fest. So it's, we're doing all the circuits right now with the awards shows and the Bornite is taking home a ton of awards out of nowhere. Uh, it's an incredible show. Uh, and it's a family friendly show, um, which you guys might enjoy. It's basically a musical. Super fun. Um, so go check those out. Those links are in the description below if you if you want to go to the Spotify albums or you can go to wherever you want to stream. And the last thing is um, my audiobook for Family First Composer is now available for free. If you'd like to grab that, that link is in the description as well. And it's also going to put you on my email list, which we're going to notify you every single week that I do streams like this and any other things you should know about all of the developments in my musical world. Um, so if you want to be informed about all that, go jump on there as well. And I hope that that is a blessing to you. So uh, this is my attempt today at um, being the Halloween episode, even though it's November, we're a couple of days late. Um, but because these streams are on Thursdays, eh, it happens. Um, so what we're doing today, uh, I don't get the privilege of working on Dark Dice too much on the air like this because a lot of it is NDA. And so much of what we do is working with high profile composers and we're, we're working on an IP that is so, it, it's moving at a breakneck speed, but I'm usually working on things that are six months, nine months, 12 months out. So I can't disclose story information that's going to ruin it for current listeners. So I have to be very careful about that. Um, but what I'm doing today is I'm working on what we're calling for our purposes here today, the unsettling town theme. And we'll jump into the session and I'll show you all that we're working on. Uh, but really quick, let me say hey to some folks. Uh, I see some new names which, and some old ones. Uh, I'm excited uh, for this this new rebranding. Uh, so we have Josh A or Josh. I've never seen Josh with an E. Is that how you say it? Is it Josh or Josh A? Um, we have Ethan, we have Matt, Andy, and several other folks who need to say hi in the live chat. So you can just wanna do a little wave emoji. We'd love to greet you here. Um, we have a note from Josh who says, hey, Stephen, I love what you do. I'm wondering if you have more content for people that are not yet ready for a career, but are learning to start composing music for the first time. Yes. And I think Matt just sent you some links and all that good stuff. So yeah, come check out the VGM Alliance. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's one of the things with the VGM Alliance is we have lots of different content on there that's catered towards where you're at in your career. So if you're a complete beginner, just go check out our free stuff. That's going to help you. It's going to get you significantly far along your way. Um, go check out the free stuff. And Matt's hooking you up there with um, links in the live chat. Uh, just start there. But if you're ready to, to take this more seriously, we have some paid courses you can check out. We have a paid membership. And then we also have uh, paid private coaching. And that's always the best thing, but it's also the most expensive. And that's something that is really for the most serious people who are really trying to level up their careers because they want to get game gigs tomorrow. Like they're ready. Um, they have the skill set, they have the confidence, they have the tools, they're ready to go. Um, but that's not everybody. That's a very small percentage. So we have different products, different services uh, for everyone at different levels, which is the intent. Um, what's up, Monoflow? And just, howdy. Man, I could just, I could just, hang out and talk with you guys all day, but I got to write some music. <laughs> um, so let's do this guys. Um, I wish I could show you some visuals or some artwork. I just, I can't do that stuff today. Um, that is one of the benefits of working on video games in particular is I get to show you gameplay footage or I get to show you artwork or whatever, but eh, such is the nature. Uh, I'm working on an audio drama called dark dice. If you haven't heard of it, I've been working on that for a few years. Um, when Jeff Goldblum joined the show in season two, it actually skyrocketed to number one fiction podcast in the world, uh, which is pretty insane. Uh, it has a very high view counts and it's insane what we get to do. Um, and very large budgets for working with A-list composers. Um, I can't disclose who we're working with at the moment, but there are two really big names that we're working with right now that I'm, I'm having the incredible honor of arranging and co-writing with these guys. Um, if, if you know the video game space, you know these names, uh, which is just incredible. It's just I gotta pinch myself uh, when I'm opening up their sessions and, and I'm working on them. I wish I could do live streams of that, but that's totally, totally 
not going to happen. Um, but I'm learning a lot and it's cool. I'll give you, I'll give you a hint that some, some of our guests are Japanese. So I'm actually learning Japanese and it's really cool that when I open up their Cubase session, it's literally in Japanese and I can see the way that they thought and the way that they composed and the way that they, um, you know, erased ideas and muted things. And, and it's just so fun. And there's really, I can't think of a greater learning experience than to literally have your hands, to have my hands on the very session of a master composer that I revere so much. So crazy. Um, so I, I am in my own form of education right now, my own school <laughs> of, of mentorship, really. All right. Anyway, um, let's jump to the show. Shaba. So what I have here today, um, I'm in the middle of writing this track. What I want to first do is just play what we have so far, some portion of it. The end goal is this is supposed to be a four minute loop. So for all intents and purposes, this is kind of like a video game track because it needs to be a loop. So when I go to the end here, right, it's supposed to loop back to the beginning seamlessly and be wonderful. But there's a second issue or, or, or charge that I have to do in the brief, and that is this has to have layers. So at any point, I should be able to play, you know, two or three layers, and it should work. So if I go over here, if we just play the solo cello and the celeste, it should work as its own low-level track. Likewise, if we were to play just the strings and the choir, that should work on its own as well. And I should also mention that this will all be performed live. I still want it to sound the best I can uh, with my mock-up. Um, you know, to convince the client that this is good. <laughs> um, and it's a good placeholder when they're cutting the episodes and everything. But um, because this is a high budget show, um, we do everything live, which is, again, pinch me. Uh, it's insane. Uh, but we typically get a bunch of tracks done, uh, usually in the neighborhood of seven, eight, nine tracks, completely finished. And then we do a bunch of recording sessions back to back strings, brass, choir, whatever. And we get all the soloists around the world to record their parts. It's usually ethnic strings and ethnic winds. That's kind of our palette for this show. And then uh, I assemble everything together. I, I love mixing, so I end up mixing it. Um, I don't think a lot of composers like mixing, but that's something I just love to do. And I can tag it on the invoice as well as another skill. Um, and I mix it all together send all the masters, all the stems, and then uh, the audio editor goes in, chops it up for the final episode. And then, of course, releases soundtracks and all that and submits it to awards and all those fun things. Um, what we're doing here is be this kind of functions like a video game because we are creating a loop. That's four minutes. But it also needs to be able to have a bit of a storytelling component. Um, and ultimately, this particular track needs to be background music that is easily talked over. So it can't get too big. It can't get too huge. And so one of my notes from uh, the editor was that the um, it currently feels way too big in the back end of the track. And that's really the part we need to focus on taming down um, somewhere around the three minute, four minute range. And ultimately, I have too much content anyway. I overwrote. Um, the brief was for four minutes, but I gave I delivered five minutes and 14 seconds which is a good problem because now I can remove some things that aren't necessary. And the end goal is to uh, deliver the final mixes as well as uh, the layers, the stems, so that the, the editor can chop up different versions. So last thing, and then I'll shut up and actually work on the music. You guys have been so kind to just let me talk. Um, the first thing I need to do is 
make sure the track works just as a, as a piece of music. But the second thing we need to do today is kind of creepify it because the story for this episode is we're going to hear this without giving the story, without telling the story is our characters are going to, uh, I should say the music is going to reflect the way that they're feeling. And throughout the episode, they're going to get a little bit more unsettled, a little bit creeped out more and more throughout the episode as weird sci-fi things happen. Um, in this town. So it's a creepy town. It starts off all nice and bubbly and happy. And then all of a sudden, like with a slight tinge of unsettling, settling nature. And then throughout the episode, and these episodes are usually like 45 minutes to 60 minutes long. So this piece of music, which is four minutes is going to be looping over and over and over again, based on the events. And then the music is going to get slightly creepier every time. So I actually need to start adding layers that can be you know, be played on top of the original track to help creepify it over time. So it, it kind of deteriorates based on the level of creepiness of what's happening. So uh, the audio editor is going to have a lot of fun, I hope, with this episode. Uh, but it's also way more work because there's just, it has to be crafted. Um, but thankfully, I don't have to do that part of it. I just have to write the music and then basically give all the puzzle pieces to the editor and then the editor is going to chop it all up. So this is the magic of how audio dramas work. It's it's like a video game, except imagine playing a video game and the developer only wants you to play a certain way. So it's like the dynamic music effect, except there's only one way because it's a linear media. <laughs> um, so it's kind of that in-between world of film, which is purely linear, video games, which are completely dynamic. And then you have this in-between land of audio drama, which is actually um, kind of ebbs and flows, which is super cool. So enough talking. Hope that this is interesting for you guys today. What I've done is I've grabbed a, a VO um, from a recent episode from season three, since we're working on season three right now. And I grabbed this clip. Uh, what just happened? Which is characters talking for, I just grabbed five minutes of it. It's simple as that. There's some background um, town ambience. Uh, in finding my way here and trying to embrace some of it. So that's the actual show. Um, so the goal is to be able to play that VO on top for the entire duration of the track without losing interest. And ultimately, the music should tell the story, but we shouldn't get so d d detracted or distracted. Um, so that's where we're at. That's the problem. It's a big problem to try to overcome today. Um, and I thought I'd turn the camera on and let you guys be a part of it. So first things first, let's play some of the track and then I'm going to fade in the VO just so you can kind of hear where we're at so far. She said has inflicted this on you. Is everything okay? I have learned through my through my time that if you are going to discover the mysteries of a place, you have to embrace some parts of it. Take our woods, for example. If you do not know the ways of the woods, you can never find your way in them. It's as simple as that. Uh in finding my way here and trying to embrace some of its oddness. <laughs> I think I have had some suspicions confirmed, which I am not so thrilled about. Or oh, perhaps on one level I am. You see, that woman did a... Uh, I had a reading of my future, and that is not something that I typically believe in, but there are a great many mysteries in my life, and this could answer a few of them, at least for me. If her troubling fortune turns out to be true, at least in the way I interpret it, then, well, we will have to confront it. Ajay, do you think that perhaps she might have been trying to mess with you? Get inside your head? You're a strong leader. You've got a really great mind. I've never seen someone get under your skin like that. 
Why did you let a stranger on a strange island read your fortune? You're the shaman of the Sangoma, a, a spiritual leader. You speak for the gods. You're a bridge to your people's ancestors, and... <sighs> so why did you open yourself up to such hokum? What if she's, I don't know, secretly evil? Some kind of uh, spiritual anarchist or something? We have to be like a... open book. Because only if the book is open can new things be written in it. I wish to learn, as all of my ancestors have done before me. If I close myself off to these people and the ways that they communicate, then what am I? A closed book. So, that is why. Whether I choose to believe these things, that is up to me. <sighs> okay, okay. But just remember that our people are counting on us. And I'm not saying that what she told you is untrue. I don't even know what she said. I'm just worried for my friend. She's clearly upset you, Ajay. And you just need to think things through from, from all angles before you let it affect you in such a way. Of course, Vind. And thank you. Let me tell you a little something about myself. I am loyal to the people that I love and care about. And I would do anything to make sure that they are safe and comfortable. And, if not, I would take every possible precaution to aid them to bring justice upon our enemies and to speak for the fallen. So, trust me, when I tell you there is nothing on this island that can stop me from achieving my goal and helping my people. Then smiled, clearly feeling the same way. I'm happy to hear that, Ajay. Uh, that, is, that is much, uh, I, I see a lot of myself in you and I'm relieved to hear that your drive to protect your people will always come first. That is why we're here, after all. So I just want to caution you against trusting anyone who claims that they can see your fate. We control our fate. And maybe the gods to some degree, but we need to work towards what we want, or it simply won't happen. I know that you have my back, and you should always remember that I've got yours. I know ah. someone's <laughs> got my back, ah. too. <sighs> so very sneaky. Oh. So there's a little bit of how kind of the, the curtain pulled back of how this whole audio drama world works. Um, and I was just saying in the live chat, <clears throat> something that continues to blow my mind is that this entire show, it's so unique. And there's a reason why Dark Dice has won. I'll put this in the description. It, I'm not joking. When they've, they've won over 50 audio awards in the last couple of years, it's insane. They've won every award you can win for podcasting because it's, it's so well made. They have incredible actors on there. And they're, the entire show is improvised. That's what blows my mind. So they're literally making this up. Think of like whose line is it anyway, that old show. Um, all the characters are just making it up as they go. So if a character says something completely ridiculous, um, they just roll with it. I think they have some ground rules about what is okay because they have a general idea of where they want to go with the story. But... Um, it's crazy. The whole thing, the whole thing is crazy to me. Um, but I was also saying that when Jeff Goldblum joined the cast in season two, so last year, um, his improv is unreal. And there were some moments where he actually uh, broke out in song. And one of my responsibilities was to actually score that and to turn it. So if you haven't heard 
the um, the Dark Dice musical. Um, I need to find a link for that, but it has it's something like twenty five minutes long, um, and it's all singing, <laughs> and all the characters just break out in the song, and I scored it, and it's it's insane. Um, we did the same thing for the White Vault. We made a musical episode. The most amount of work I've ever put into anything, I think, uh, like a singular piece of music. Um, crazy, 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 crazy. But anyway, back to the show. So here's what, I, what I'm feeling. I think it's pretty obvious that right around measure 82 is where it gets way too big. If this was just its own piece of music, I think it would work. But it's not. It just has to work for the world and for the talking and everything. So I feel like this is just where it gets utterly way too big and I need to figure out what I'm going to cut because I like everything up to this point right here and that time code is 328 plus a bar because I started at, at two seconds so um, what I'm feeling and I have a saved version of the previous version in case this goes this goes sour um, but let me find where I'm going to cut because the actual length of this thing is supposed to be right there so that's the four minute loop point so oh man this is gonna be a tough decision but let's just play around and see what needs to be cut are all part of that C section so maybe that would be worth keeping I hate to do this because this is my favorite part of the whole track Jeez. but this is what we have to do for our clients we have to be willing to make tough choices uh, let's see what happens if I delete I have a shortcut here that deletes a whole chunk of time. So let's see what happens if we just do that. And then that's the loop. Stinks, but I mean, that's it's not a bad decision. Uh, maybe there's a way to sneak in this cello. I really like uh, the solo cello bits. So maybe this chunk we can borrow put it over here Puts us at 352, so it's actually too short. But I'm wondering if it would be best to just change the tempo of the whole darn thing. Um, <clears throat> so what if we made this mm, 64? What does that put us at? Time code. Here it's a loop. Oh gosh, even that, that pushed it out way. So maybe just do a very, very small tempo change of two beats per minute. What would that do? Sometimes that's the answer if you don't want to write new content. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. Let's do that. So this is my loop point. It is dead on loop four minutes. Um, so let's make the new time 93, two. And then let's get these guys all situated. I think that's the answer, and I hate it because that's a minute of really good unused music, but it doesn't serve the project, so it, it has to go.
I don't usually like ending on a one chord like this, but I do think it's the right answer in this situation. And I always got to clean up. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still not 100% recovered from the cold, if you couldn't tell. I'm pretty close. All I'm doing right now is um, trying to get... I just made a big old change. I want to make sure that everything is going to sound good when I combine these measures together because I <laughs> just chopped off a whole minute of music. It's a pretty drastic cut, but it worked because it, it chopped off two whole sections of the music. Let's see what it sounds like. Cello feels miserably off. Let's put it at negative 80 milliseconds. It's still off 100. Jeez, 150. That felt awesome. I've got to fix the choir there at the end. Had a weird awe moment. That's why you see it. I really just need to start lower like that. And then I'll do the same thing for Mr. Cello. Miss Cello, I suppose. It's the Tina Guo Library right here. Just do one of these. Highly recommend if you are not used to making little curves for your, like automating the mod wheel is one of the best ways to make things musical. That's cool. So now, let me get to this moment of the VO. It really shouldn't feel too big. So let's do a little test run of this last section. Nothing on this island that can stop me from achieving my goal and helping my people. And smiled, clearly feeling the same way. I'm happy to hear that, Auge. That is much, I, I see a lot of myself in you, and I'm relieved to hear that your drive to protect your people will always come first. That is why we're here, after all. So I just want to caution you against trusting anyone who claims that they can see your fate. We control our fate. But what just happened? So you were there for quite some time, and you seem to be, um, I guess, struck by whatever happened. Maybe something she said has inflicted this on you. Is everything okay? I... Yeah, that feels so good. <clears throat> I do want to update these strings, though. They're kind of quiet. I like the simplicity of this. This is working really well. Very clear theme which is easy to recognize while people are talking because <coughs> it's so simple. Mm -hmm. 
What's up, Jordan? All right, here's what this violin needs. It's kind of wonky on its volume levels. So I'm going to turn it up a bunch with a compressor right here. So we're going to do that shape where it's not a huge ratio, not a huge threshold. But this way we can make the release go up and then we can use the output knob here to bump the volume or the perceived volume by six. And in doing that, it's going to kind of normalize the sound. It's going to make sure the loudest sounds are tamed down, but the softest sounds are bumped up. That way it's, it's much more legible in the mix. Feel that? So now there's just too much. Let's try three. May not need any boost, honestly. So now, with some trial and error, I'm just going to turn down the loudest notes. This will be real, it'll sound, sound 5,000 times better. Cool, that sounds good. Nice and simple. People are talking over this, so it has to translate. As all of my ancestors have done before me, if I close myself off to these people and the ways that they communicate, then what am I? A closed book. So that is why. section and I like that at least if I had to pick between this C or the previously deleted D and E sections I feel like this is the more notable one because it's so simple right it's so catchy so I feel like in this instance it's best to just keep this one and, and develop it versus trying to change into more themes I think this one just translates better and I can start smaller and get Without, I, I can grow without having to get too loud, which was the big problem earlier. And that, that dulcimer just cuts through, especially when it's live. A live dulcimer really cuts through in the mix. It's actually a little bit too quiet. Velocity. Cello really sings now. I see a lot of myself in you. To hear that your drive to protect your people will always come first. 
That is why we're here after all. So I just want to caution you against trusting anyone who claims that they can see your fate. Ah, uh, but here's the, here's the difference. Here's my mistake. These are now an octave too high. And if the goal is to just not get too big in this track, as much as I musically would like that, I need to push all of these down an octave. Yeah, that feels better. I like ending on a choir awe, though. That's pretty cool. Uh, that feels way better. Here, after all. So I just want to caution you against trusting anyone who claims that they can see your fate. We control our fate. <laughs> what a funny place to end. That's like a perfect phrase. Trusting anyone who claims that they... That's a great reverb tail into the beginning, which is also an A minor chord. So yeah, cool. The one chord. Excellent. It's a simple track, but it works so well. Okay, so this is the bass track, right? The foundation. So now, <clears throat> the next level, we can't be done. If this was a normal track, yeah, we'd be, we'd be done. But um, the next portion of this is we need to also create a creepy version and, and a tint of creepy that... If this is level one, we basically need to create a level five or level ten level creepy but still within the context of being able to talk over it. And it's more, that's why we titled this today, Unsettling Town Theme. We're not trying to go for like the psycho string effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't work. But there are some things we can do that if we layer these on top or take some things out, it should feel a little bit creepier. And that's what we're going for. So if this is level one, we're really just going to do a level two and a level three. Uh, yes, this is supposed to loop. This track is supposed to loop. That's the goal. Um, every track in Dark Dice loops. Isn't that crazy? Um, that is, it's very much like a video game. Because the end use case of these tracks is that every section should be able to be looped. So if in this case, there is a an A section a B section and a C section. So they're they're not reusing any material because this one piece of music has to last an entire episode, which is about 45 minutes to an hour. So what the editor does, and he's a genius in his own right, and what he does is he's not only throwing in all the sound design and all of the sound effects and the VO and all that, he is taking all of my stems and he's recombining the puzzle pieces. So for five minutes, at the beginning, it might just be a background pad or strings, just a harmony, right? And then, especially in some of these tracks, we have percussion, so it might just be a drum beat. And then all of a sudden, there's a pause and something happens in the story, a character dies or something, or someone screams in the distance, and all of a sudden, um, he might take some more intensity levels, like now there's a melody on top, and then typically we save choir for the most intense moments, especially if there's text involved. And that's what he does is he just, you know, the, the, the pieces of music are already four or five minutes long. So he's repurposing these uh, layers to create different dynamic um, environments. So that way we're using the same theme for the entire episode. So it's almost like a whole soundtrack composed or, you know, repurposed out of one piece of music. So that's how I have to think about writing this music. Um, but then if he needs a scene to last, you know, one extra minute because the characters aren't done talking about this one topic or they're in one location, then he'll typically take like the B section of the track and just loop it so that it plays twice or he'll, um, he'll add in the melody and t or take it away. So that's what he's doing. He's repurposing it. And because he's a good, good audio editor and because I've in advance already made everything loopable, uh, that's why. So let's do a quick test. You want to see that in, in action? So if I go over here, Let's go to measure 10 and 50. 
okay? So this is the entire A section. So this should loop on its own by itself. <laughs> it does and he has all when I deliver my masters I give him reverb tails and things so yeah that works perfect this could be its own piece of music and it is likewise the B section starts at 50 and goes to 66 this should loop it by itself too obviously that violin would not be in there So that's sometimes what what we'll do, is we'll just loop that three or four times while characters are talking, and then that's how we advance to the next. And let's just do one more test. These are the tests I can run in, in my DAW. 66 to 91. This should work. See? Isn't that cool? Which is why I typically start each section a little bit small and then I grow it so that way it's its own self-contained loop. So yeah, that's how this works. And because I know my editor is so savvy, let's say he wants to go from C to B. By the way, this is what middleware does. If, if those of you have not played around with middleware, I don't see the need to use middleware for a podcast, but um, this is essentially what it does is you just tell it loop C to B, C to A, A to B, two times, remove this. It just kind of simplifies the process, but we do everything manually anyway, because it's linear, it's linear media. Um, but here, here is C looped back to B. Yeah, it works great. Um, the only thing you have to watch out for are like little tails like this, the transition tails of like cymbals and violin. And this is why I deliver everything in stems so that if they tried to repeat from C to B, they totally could, but they would just have to remove that stem, that one individual. They would be able to go here, hit mute, or they would chop it off, right? Um, oh, the powers of audio editing. Super cool, huh? All right, um, which is why I don't mind including symbols and transition material because it can be easily removed with stems. And I painstakingly go out of my way to master every stem. And this is one of the beauties of using Cubase slash New Window. I actually talk about it in my latest course. For those of you within VGM Alliance, you'll get to this soon. Um, and it is, there's a, a marketing, marketing, a mastering hack, if you will. Uh, it is a, a, a default function within Cubase or New Window that other DAWs do not have, and it saves me countless hours when I do it. And it is simply, I'll show you if you want to know real quick, when it's in my bounce screen, I can do multiple. And not just that, I can select all the reverbs I want, all of the effects. There's this magic button right here called Effects Ma plus Master Groups Sins. And by doing that, when I hit export, it doesn't just export each stem. It exports every stem run through every group, run through every effects channel and the stereo out, which has my mastering on it. So it is a beautiful feature. And that way, after hitting that button, it's one function. Yeah, it takes like, you know, 15 minutes, whatever, to run it because <clears throat> it has to export every single thing I tell it to individually through the, the mastering, but then I deliver that to my client and then he can do anything in the world he wants to, which is why I write this way. So hopefully that is encouraging. Um, and I also, you know, part of this show, man, I'm talking a lot today. <sighs> Bear with me. You know, for the eight people watching, 10 people watching right now, uh, 60, actually 60 people watching right now. Um, I want to encourage you that even though I spend so much of my time talking about video game music, um, and that's why Video Game Music Alliance exists, I want you to know that your skill sets as a composer can be pretty easily transferred from um, video game world into podcast world. They're very similar. 
In fact, I'd say they're almost identical in, in the composition process because everything we're talking about today is an interactive vertical layer in loops. That's what video games are. It's a bit of a stretch to say it's the same thing as film scoring because that's just not true because film scoring is point A to point B, a linear storytelling. That's another skill set you have to learn and master, but, but that's also contained within video games in cinematic cutscenes and title screens and trailers. So it's all connected. So don't let anyone tell you that you can't do multiple mediums. You totally can, but just know that they're going to be slightly nuanced in the way that you write and deliver. But I hope part of this show can show you that, hey, you can do more than one thing if you want. Anyway, um, all right, now, geez, I'm talking so much, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Um, what I need to do, oh, sorry, guys, I meant to turn on my chat box. Give me a second. I turned all those off for some reason. There you go. Sorry. You guys are talking. It's supposed to show up on the screen. My bad. All right. This is what I get for updating my my uh, my YouTube YouTube stuff. Ah, by the way, I'm not a sponsor. I'm not sponsored by coffee, but um, recently tried per recommendation of my dear wife. She said, "Hey, you ever tried making a white chocolate lavender iced latte?" And I said, "No, I haven't. But you better believe I'm going to do that right now." And so for the last few days, I've been rocking. White chocolate lavender. It is a bizarre combo that works so well. So, big fan. Anyway, I <laughs> also really like white chocolate and raspberry. Very good. Anyway, uh, what I need to do is I need to create some creepy textures. So, let me go to one of my trusty plugins here inside Contact. Uh, I have, have a few spots I want to go. The first one, I hope you will enjoy this ride with me. First one is Cage Strings. Hey, see you, Tom. We're going to do three of these. So it's going to be cage strings. You can't see any of that. Cage strings. I don't think cage brass is going to be wise in this context. Um, winds, maybe. And then we also need to grab... Let's do def let's do some choir, Iliotork. And we'll find that from... Is this Sona Kinetic? Uh, it's 2D Vox. So I'm going to say choir. Here, let's just do this. Strings effects. Let's call it cage. This would be winds effects. Cage. It's going to be choir effects. Uh, 2D Vox. And there's also. Soda Kinetic has another. I can't for life for me remember the name of it, but we're going to call it Soda Kinetic Ensemble effects. And we'll start playing around with that. Uh, this is going to be for, specifically for my layers. Uh, and there's there's lots we could do here. I am going to color code these so they can uh, show up in the correct sections later. I like to do pink for woodwinds, choir, I like to do purple. Um, ensemble, the whole thing, I will probably just keep it gray. All right. So um, I should mention this. VGMA, inside the Alliance, we have um, pro perks. So anyone inside pro or elite tiers have access to our pro perks. And guess what's coming up later this month? Black Friday. So companies like 8DO in particular, one of my favorite companies to shop from, they have, they usually do some kind of deal, right? Let's just call it 50% off for Black Friday, which is already fantastic. Well, guess what? Inside VGMA, we have exclusive deals with all of our partner companies that stack on top of the Black Friday deals. So I forgot what ours is for them, but it's something like 50% or 70%. And then you take that, you stack it on top of the global price decrease um, for the holiday, you got yourself some sweet deals. So you might be walking home with um, a Dagietto for five bucks this month or something. So just take a look uh, when it comes time for that. I want to just throw that out there uh, because I'm about to grab um, Cage. The Cage bundle is from 8DO. Big fan. I have a lot of their libraries. Uh, they're just, they're so good. Um, Cage is this guy. 
John Cage is his name. So they have strings, brass, and woods. And woodwinds, uh, the strings, I use this in just about every Dark Dice piece of music because they're so flipping good. And um, it's 10 patches per string ensemble, or per um, section of the orchestra, which is insane. So let's just play around. I mean, we could probably do everything we need with just this patch, but I want to experiment because we have the time and I don't want to just be boring and lame like that. But they're very aleatoric. In our routing though, let's make sure that they're all routed to our Aether plugin. Let's put it at negative 20. That's our reverb. They're all mod wheel. So I feel like we need to find a texture that can just kind of float. That's a little bit too intense. Let's just keep playing around. Let's make sure we can see our keyboard. Perfect Halloween music. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, that's the best one, because it's like a big smear of... That's so good. We're going to be duplicating this a lot. So we're going to call this um, textures. Okay. I really like that. And I think that when he loops stuff, he's probably just going to do it for... The A, B, and C, I don't see any need to put it on the beginning. So I'm going to ride the, the mod wheel for a little bit. And this is going to be a little bit boring, but and kind of chaotic. what I'm doing over here. See, I'm riding the mod wheel. Of course, we can't possibly do that for the whole thing. That would just be awful. But I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this for each of the section, the, the A section for now. And I am going to quantize it. Probably to the quarter notes. Remember, I'm basically building a, uh, a collection of puzzle pieces for my client. This doesn't have to work as a single piece of music because we're going to be muting things and exporting it all individually or as sections. Um, I liked that one, so let me create another one. We'll just keep labeling these. Make sure uh, organization is key here. So this can be textures two. And for this one, let's go to the next. like those. So let's go to the B section, or at least the next. might seem kind of psychotic what I'm doing right now, but it 
again, I'm building puzzle pieces that can all be layered. And what I'm really trying to do is just create some musicality because if I were to just hand him a straight up patch that just stays the same the whole time, that's just, that's not useful or musical. So you see how much more musical that is now, right? And it's cut to time. That's good. Now let's do another one. My goal here is to cover up the entirety with what we're calling textures to represent um, each of the sections, essentially. Okay, so here is the B. And let's uh, do a different sound. Let me get, open up that patch. I like that one. There we go. Oops, let me get the mod wheel. Let's do another one. Just what you all came to see today, me holding down a key. But there is something to this. Uh, again, building, literally creating building blocks, right? The Lego pieces, if you will. Like this one, chopping chaos. Chaos. <laughs> That's fun. at a low volume that's pretty pretty cool just let it happen I know this sounds so stupid What I'll probably do here is just add on to it. So he has more options. So what I'm going to do is this. Keep it going, which should last all of this, that section. We'll do another one. And really just keep it going until the end, which is there. So now what I can do is add on a little bit more intense for the last one. And then this guy. We'll do that. You see how it's building? So really I'm just going to do that. See that shape? And looks psychotic, but you know, gets the job done. Now remember, these are these are going to be way lower in volume. So I'll go over here. Let's go ahead and make them all. Um, let's just make them like negative six. We're getting somewhere, okay? Creepifying it in different intensity levels. Now, let's also take a look at... 
I think it might be cool to have one more a pizzicato one. So even though it's weird, it's it's adding cool textures. Okay. Now, perhaps the most fun would be this one. So let's grab 2D box. Uh, there's some really cool things here. I think it might be cool to get... Let's just start with the core. So many cool effects. This is actually how we have created a lot of the cool um, choir effects live with our live recordings. It's one of the coolest things here. You can actually see the sheet music, which is so unnecessary. Check that out. You can actually watch the sheet music. So we've actually copied some of these and like modified them to our own use. What a useful learning tool. Just better believe we're about to get crazy up in here. Let's do loops. Oh, that's so good. Did anyone say shadow temple? That's so cool. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be, we should call it textures one and we're just going to do a whole pats of that that is the creepiest town of all time That's right, Jay. Can't avoid the Zelda. It's in everything I do. I forgot to add that to the reverb as well. Hold on. Let's do 20. Negative 20. All right, so over here, this is now going to be number two. Let's find another texture. There's so many loops inside this thing. Oops, and I forgot to. I forgot to make it quantized. All right. That's a uh, boom, boom, shiggy, boom, 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 boom. All right, so let's find another epic patch. So good. By the way, choirs love that. 
every time we did something crazy, some fun aleatoric effects, they eat that stuff up and they, they laugh hysterically after doing it too. so great that final mix 45 minutes of this insanity it's gonna take him a lot of a lot of work but he asked for it this is what he hired me to do all right um let's pick another one that's so creepy i'll save that we'll call that let's see one, two, three, four, five. We'll make that number five. Like way down here. One, two, three, four. No, we'll make it number four. It'll be this. Let's just do it for the this part. <laughs> I think that's the level he wants to go. If not, just don't use that, that layer. Uh, but let's grab a third. I think that one was just way too loud. So I will make sure that one gets knocked back down to like by 6 dB or so. It's just more loud than it was scary. Um, all right. We have our last one to fill in the middle. Let's find something a little bit in between. I like that one because it, it moves a little bit more. I'll put that here in the middle section. That guy needed to be quantized. And then let's do one final one. Oh, it's just so creepy. Then it gets... 
Same thing, just some volume control. Okay. And then tidy it up. That'll be cool. All right. Wow. I think you can get into all the crazy crazy of like the chicken pox. Bonk, 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 bonk. Which could be cool. Maybe. I, I think the textures are going to work better. We don't need screams and things that are going to like detract from the VO ultimately. So I think that's a good stopping spot with that. Um, I do want to try something though. I can't remember which Sonokinetic it is, but thankfully in contact you can type in company name and it gives you all of the products from that company. Super cool. Um, one of these is like the creepy Espressivo is probably it. Take a guess. If I was guessing. Yeah, this is it. So cool. Much more of the motion y kind of things. One of the coolest libraries ever. this on some dark dice as well this is so effective this is more of like the random type music what I'm going to do is mute all of the previous things we've done just so it doesn't get in the way so this one is called yeah espressivo effects I'll say ensemble effects I just want to be able to see what I'm doing though Correctly, it's key based. Let me see their map. It's so cool because it shows you the graphics while you're doing it. But guys, sample libraries have come to an insane level. These are all live performances. So. Alright, so the first three, first three, first three white keys are strings. So I'm gonna live, and then woodwinds are the next three. Alright, C sharp, D sharp, and F are woodwinds. And then brass are G A B. And then percussion is F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. So as long as I hang out on C D E, C sharp, D sharp, F, that's that'll give me everything I need. It starts on C one. And it stops there. So it's my entire keyboard. That's cool. This will be fun. You ready? <laughs> I'm just going to like have a performance. You ready?
that's there. So this is just going to be string effects. I'm going to call it strings effects uh, movement. Pretty sure this thing's programmed to four four time and I'm in six four, so that's not really working. here. I don't think there's anything wrong with stopping at that spot since we already have so much stuff. All right. Um, winds. How are there still some of you listening to this right now? <laughs> Y'all are dedicated. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to this. You're braver than me. spend the whole day doing this, did you? Joke's on you. Like I said, I'm getting paid to do this right now, so I'll do it all day. <laughs> <laughs> The reason this is going to work is because look at all the things we can choose from.
Now let's add the last missing layer, which is going to be this kind of in-between piece here. So those are all movements. Um, so let's try effects, textures for the woodwinds. Let's help fill in that last little gap here. Um, so under the cage, series, pretty epic. All right, winds, instruments, let's do high winds, textures. <laughs> That's really good. Texture, I like that a lot. So here we go, we'll probably do two of these. Um, textures one will hang out right here. why. Whether I choose to believe these things, that is up to me. brave soldiers who just listened to that <clears throat> and didn't turn down your music didn't turn down your volume i applaud you <laughs> but look now we have just oodles of things that are usable and there's at least some kind of musical arc to it <laughs> um it never n gets super overloaded but any of these pieces could be used i mean we're talking about all of this right here that is 12, I think, if I can count correctly. No, 10, 11, 12, 13 unique ideas that can be shuffled around and tossed around. And maybe it's not exactly what they want, but you know, it's, it's a good starting place. The reason behind that is it gives some constant motion and everything sounds different enough that you can kind of jump to any spot and have some low grade horror. So theoretically, if we play the track. Why did you let a stranger on a strange island read your fortune? You're the shaman of the Sangoma. A, a That's pretty cool. Spiritual leader. You speak for the gods. You're a bridge to your people's ancestors. And <sighs> so why did you open yourself up to such hokum? What if she's, I don't know, secretly evil? Some kind of uh, spiritual anarchist or something? We have to be... It actually works without the music. ...like a... ...open book. Because only if the book is open can new things be written in it. I wish to learn, as all of my ancestors have done before me. Worried for my friend. She's clearly a... ...about myself. I am... 
loyal to the people that I love and care about. And I would do anything to make sure that they are safe and comfortable. A lot of myself and you, and I'm relieved to hear that your drive to protect your people will always come first. That's cool. That actually works, guys. Because now there's just so many... They're going to be treated more like sound effects anyway. But the idea is now the whole piece of music... <clears throat> the building blocks work. And that's really what I was going for here. So I can't believe that we're, we're done. We're done. Uh, there's really nothing to play out today with you guys because essentially it's a bunch of building blocks that I'm going to be delivering to the client and then they'll be reshuffling it and everything. We'll be getting ready for the, the live sessions and everything, but I'm pretty happy with this. So um, that is what I set out to do today. So thank you guys for being a part of the insanity but as you can see, it works. Uh, in its current state, though, this is not the final version because there's all these other stages of recording live music, throwing it back in, creating different layers and, and sessions. But what I'm going to do, just to deliver to the client, just so you're aware, is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use the this amazing function within Nuendo, which literally lets me select the whole <clears throat> distance of like my range. And then I'm literally going to go over here, multiple, and just export all of the stems. That's all there is to it, just like that. And then the client can start playing around with them and making sure it's exactly what is needed. And that's all there is to it. So hope you guys have a fabulous day. I uh, look forward to reconnecting again next week. We're going to be doing an Aethermancer track from that video game soundtrack. And it's going to be tons of fun. So set your calendars, 12 p.m. next week, Thursday. Um, Eastern Standard. So thank you guys for being a part. This is a shorter stream today, but I hope you're all doing fantastic and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.